Welcome to Lesson 2. I'm going to create a matte glaze. We're going to deal with many basic concepts in both ceramic chemistry and using insight. Things like adjusting the recipe side by side with the original matte glaze chemistry and target formulas. We're going to talk about silica alumina ratio and matteness. Paying attention to side effects of adjusting a glaze. Fritz selection and substitution static and added material status and retotaling, glaze leaching, and we'll work with the recipe details tab and I'll introduce analysis and mold percent. What makes a glaze matte? Many factors can be at play, but the major one is the chemistry. To demonstrate, I'm going to adjust the chemistry of a glossy glaze to make it fire matte. I still have the recipes open and the lessons materials database is selected from the last lesson. So I could start by clicking the Close Both Recipes button and key in the glossy recipe. But instead I'll just open a glossy recipe I already have as a starting point. I'll select Recipe 1 and choose Open from the File menu. Insight displays the Recipe Database window. To find the one I want quickly I'm searching the word Gloss here. Notice I've checked the C Notes Recipes box to make this dialog show me more detail about each line as I click it. Here it is. This is the 20 by 5 recipe that we have used for years as a starting point for adjustment projects like this. I'll click the Open button. Now I will duplicate Recipe 1 into Recipe 2 and then make changes to 2 and compare. This is a way that Insight is often used. You'll really see how it excels at this as we go along. In the dialog that displays, I'll click the Copy Write button. Notice I can also move a recipe to the other, add it, and swap them. The recipe list should now look like this. As before, notice the recipes share the same material label, but have separate columns for amounts. Now I'll click the Recipe Details tab. Notice I've entered cone 6 matte base into the description blank for recipe 2. I also signed a new code number for this 1214 series to write on test samples. There's a web page about this glaze. I'm going to paste the URL here. In future, anyone looking at this glaze will be able to click this button to read all about it. I'm going to compare the formula of the G1214M recipe with a target formula to rationalize what changes might mat the glaze. So I'll click the, the green Open Target button and in the Recipe Database window, Insight is showing me only the ones that contain the word Target in the code column. I'll click the Roy Hesselberth one for Cone 6 and then click Open. The formula list should now look like this. I adjusted the column widths to a little to display them correctly. Notice that the target formula weaves itself into the list and also displays oxides that may not be present. I've unchecked KNAO to demonstrate that this target combines the K2O and Na2, Na2O into KNAO, so it does not appear beside them. I'll, I'll click it again, and now it looks better. You can learn what makes glazes matte by searching for matte glaze in the Google search on digitalfire.com at the home page. It dynamically pushes the search results downward on the page. I clicked here in the Digital Fire reference section to get it to show more. This is the one I want. Matteness is the result if the glaze microsurface is not glassy smooth. This smoothness can, of course, be impeded by improper melting, but of course, you won't get a durable glass. Here are some correct ways to do it. Glossy glazes with a significant amount of boron, for example 0.2 or higher, form matte surfaces at a point after complete melting but before smooth out. Alumina stiffens the glaze melt and keeps it from running off the wear. High alumina thus prevents the glaze from leveling out. High silica glazes are glossy, so it stands to reason that low silica ones with high-end alumina would likely be matte. Now we know why people talk about the silica-alumina ratio. It can be a measure of gloss. A ratio below 5 is a typical goal. 
in well-mounted glazes, if some oxides like CAO, SRO, BAO amounts are high-end or higher than limits, a microcrystal mesh can form on the surface during cooling, and it scatters light and looks matte. Notice these. This means there is a trace of the oxide less than 0.00. Now we are going to increase the Al203 to the upper end of its range and reduce the SiO2 to the lower end of its range. The first obvious step is to remove the silica in recipe 2 to reduce SiO2 in the formula as much as possible. I can do that by editing the line to 0 or clicking this button. Notice how much the SiO2 has dropped and how much lower the silica alumina ratio is. Again, this ratio is an indicator of gloss in alumina matte glazes and it needs to be around 5 to 1 for this type of glaze to be a good matte. Thus, I need to bring it down more. I'll select AL203 in the formula list and click the supplier button. Insight searches for the recipe material contributing the most AL203 and selects the kaolin in the recipe list. As you can see, I will double the amount of kaolin in recipe 2 to 40. Remember how you know what oxides are supplied by a material? Just double click it in the recipe list to bring up the materials dialog for that material. The silica alumina ratio is now much lower, maybe even too low. This would very likely be a mat. However, there is a couple of problems. First, 40 parts kaolin provides the needed alumina, but would likely shrink and crack the glaze during drying on the wear. And second, the thermal expansion of this recipe is high. It will likely craze. How do I know? Because in my experience, 7.5 is too high an expansion for the bodies that I use. To find articles on crazing at the Digital Fire Reference Library, follow the procedure I'm doing here after you log in, of course. At the article's home page, this section on thermal expansion is especially interesting. I found an article that says, substituting high soda potash for another lower expansion flux is the biggest single thing you can do to stop crazing. What would happen if I removed the felspar, the biggest contributor of sodium and potassium? There is a way to check without changing the recipe. I'll make sure Recipe 2 and the Felspar line is selected and click the Phantom checkbox and then click Update. This tells Insight not to include the Felspar's chemistry in the calculated formula. Notice the asterisk in front of the Felspar. I will click this button. Insight explains what the symbols it displays in front of the recipe lines mean. Insight ignores the Felspar completely in chemistry calculations now behaving as if it could not find the chemistry for it in the materials database. Notice the SiO2 has dropped considerably and the KNaO is down a lot in exchange for calcia. Remember, I want low silica for matting and low KNO, KNaO to prevent crazing. This looks good. I'll zero the amount of felspar in recipe 2. To finish, I would reduce the frit to match B203 back up and increase the silica in the recipe to bring the SiO2 up to the minimum 2.5 target. However, as noted, 40 kaolin in the recipe is likely too high because the glaze will shrink excessively during drying. I could use a mix of calcined and raw kaolin to solve the problem, but that's a lot of trouble. There is a better way. Now the felspar is gone, and I've changed the kaolin amount in recipe 2 back to 20. I will also uncheck the phantom checkbox for this line and update so recipe 1, which contains the felspar, will calculate correctly again. Now I'll select the frit line and double click it to open the materials dialog. Notice that this frit contains no AL203. I'll click frit 3124, it's just above frit 3134, so I need to scroll the list up. Notice that FRIT3124 has significant AL203. 
It is interesting to note that if you add enough alumina to FRIT 3134 to equal the alumina in FRIT 3124, the overall chemistries are very similar. As you can see, using a FRIT with no alumina is a little illogical for making a matte glaze if it necessitates the use of too much clay to source alumina. I've closed the materials dialog, selected the FRIT 3134 line for recipe 2 and zeroed it. I also selected the next blank line in recipe 2 and entered FRIT 3124 with an amount of 20. The formulas now look like this. Notice the B2O3 is down but the Al2O3 is up without any extra kaolin yet. I have increased the FRIT 3124 to match the B2O3 first. To do this I selected the FRIT 3124 line and made sure recipe 2 was selected. I clicked at the increment arrow repeatedly. Each time Insight incremented the amount on the selected recipe line by the amount shown here and updated the calculated formula for recipe 2. I kept doing this until the B203 and the two formulas matched and it did at 31 parts of FRIT. That took the AL203 in G1214M recipe to 0 0.36. I'm targeting at least 0 0.45. The silica should be the minimum 2.5 target. That gives the silica to an alumina ratio of 5.5. So I selected the kaolin line in recipe 2 and clicked the increment button until the alumina for recipe 2 reached 0 0.45. This took the kaolin to 27. I've selected the silica line for recipe 2 and nudged it up until the SiO2 reached 2.5. This turned out to be 4.0 silica. Later this bit of silica in the recipe will make it easy to fine tune the amount of gloss. Notice again that there is more CaO and less KNaO now. This will help drive down the thermal expansion and it will encourage matting. How do I know that? I can double click the CaO oxide line and click the info button in the oxides dialog. Insight takes me to a page where I can read all about this oxide. Notice there are links to the other oxides here. Now I have a glossy on the left and a matte on the right. The silica and alumina are about where I want them. The ratio is good and the thermal expansion is the same. This is actually quite an achievement. It's actually possible to take the expansion a lot lower than this by sourcing MGO from dolomite or talc or better yet a frit at the expense of CAO. But this should not be necessary. This should fit just about any body that I use. I could increase the CAO even more to grow more calcium silicate microcrystals on cooling to get an even better mat. This would require care to be sure the glaze was not soluble. Mat glazes look best when they're opaque. I have selected the next blank line in recipe 2 and put in four parts of Zircopax and then clicked the static checkbox and the update button. Why four parts? From experience, but you might like to do a line blend. Notice the line has an equal sign here. This is the static attribute. It tells Insight not to change its amount when retotaling the recipe, forcing others to compensate. For example, the others would total to 96 if I retotal it to 100 now. What is the total for this recipe? Look in the calculated items list. It's 86. I am recalculating the recipe to a total of 104. 100 for the recipe plus 4 opacifier. I'm using the retotal dialog from the calc menu. After clicking OK, notice that the Zircopax amount has not changed. Notice also that the other amounts are rounded off to the nearest tenth. I did this by choosing round amounts in the calc menu. You might like to mix this recipe up and try it at cone 6. You'll see that it is a mat. I want to show you something else while we're here. I could have set Zircopax to added status by checking this instead of phantom. Notice the A in the status column. But notice what happens when I recalculate the total to 100. These numbers total 100, but the Zircopax gets recalculated to 
and thus the whole recipe to 104.88. The Zircopax was 4 out of 86 before, so it has to be 4.88 out of 104.88 now to be the same proportion. Now I've selected analysis calculation type for both recipes. Remember, analyses compare oxide amounts by their weights rather than the numbers of molecules. Some engineers like to look at glazes this way also. Notice the comparison. Remember the mat is on the right. There is 8 less silica, 50% more alumina, half the KNAO, and much more CAO. These are all characteristics of true matte glazes. An added bonus, chrome tin pink stains require at least 10% calcium oxide. Both of these work really well with them. Mole percent calculation is different again. It compares the percentages of numbers of molecules. Some engineers like Richard Epler argue that this is the most realistic way to compare glazes. You might have some questions. How can I get away with CAO that is higher than the limit? This is often acceptable if MGO is near zero and if there's plenty of B2O3 to melt things well. Remember also, chrome tin colors require high CAO and matte glazes work best with it as well. Also, since these recipes look so different now, you might think it is a stretch to say that the matte is an adjusted version of the glossy. But remember, we're working on the oxide level. This matte formula is an adjusted version of the other. High calcium glazes can have leaching problems, but we have high alumina and plenty of boron to help melt it. These are stabilizing influences. My initial goal was to, or was appearance and glaze fit, but it would be easy to add a coloring oxide like cobalt and then do a vinegar leaching test as an in initial indicator. But the solution still will be a matter of understanding oxides and their interplays. You might think I'm taking a cavalier attitude toward the limits, but remember that limit formulas are about what melts well, not what does not leach. If I exceed a target and get good melting, that's great. Glazes within limits are less likely to leach, but those outside can also be durable. Also, mats are considered special purpose glazes so don't expect them to have typical chemistries. That's the end of this lesson.